So, um, challenges. We've, we've touched a lot in previous meetings about funding, obviously, and we, I think all of us on the committee recognise the challenges that exist there. Um, so I guess my question really is more about the practical challenges within school funding aside. What um, do you feel you are missing or what are those hurdles in terms of, you know, um, the training expertise that might be available, um, or the barriers to you accessing the support that you need, relationships with local authorities, or, or what do you feel are the, the big practical challenges? I think we could do a lot more in schools if some of the money that goes currently into private provision or other provision for children came into schools and allowed us to work creatively with it um, because we've got, I mean we've done something similar to you in that we've set up a provision that is staffed by two adults for six or seven children to avoid that need of having someone stapled to someone's yeah. side but for some children they can manage in a class of 30, but they need someone to help them do it, and they need yeah. that person there all of the time, not because they need them all of the time, but because when they do need them, they really need them. So we've got a lot of children in our school on the spectrum, and they're in different classes across the school. You could say, well, actually, each of those children only needs a grown-up alongside them for a third of the day because they're managing the rest of the time. But the trouble is, you know, the one's here, one's here, one's here. You can't do that. It doesn't yeah. practically work. And as our budgets have become more and more constrained, then we've had to have less and less. So our school's grown rapidly from 32 children to 450 because we were in a new town. Wow. Seven homes were occupied when we started, and now 1,800 homes are occupied. So it's been a really rapid rate of growth. But we have less staff now than... We've got 420 children than we did when we had 340 children. And we've got 33% special needs and quite high numbers of disadvantaged children. So it's a challenging cohort. And if that could be more recognised, and I was really pleased at our recent Ofsted that our context was very much taken into account and progress was a real something that they really looked at and they understood. But what they were also wanting to know, which we've got the data to prove, is that the, the high level of SEN wasn't causing the, the um, other children who don't have SEN's <coughs> attainment and progress to dip, mm. because it takes a lot of energy and time and expertise to support those children effectively well. Yeah. And I think if schools were more relaxed about that understanding being very prevalent and very much part of any inspection process or any other process that they go through, then they might be more open because we have 33%, the school down the road has 1%. Mm. You know, there is a real disparity across mm. Devon of schools who will and schools who are inclusive and schools who won't yeah. because of what you were talking about, which is the need to achieve schools on the doors. I certainly find on a local level that the, there are schools that have a good <coughs> reputation for that SEN support that then get more uh, mm -hmm. concentration. Mm -hmm. Would you welcome them? Because obviously at the minute it, they, there's a very tight limitation on how much of that SEN funding within local authorities can go into school projects. Is that something you'd like to see change so there is that flexibility? I would, yeah, I think yeah. that flexibility. I think schools who have, because who, the other thing is that schools who have those reputations, they attract yeah. staff who are interested in yeah. working with children who might be more challenging and staff who are interested in gaining further expertise through training and if those schools were funded to be able to do that well, that I think that would be an effective way yeah. of going forward. I, I do agree with everything you said. I mean, there are challenges around budget. I just, to add to that, for my resource provision, I have a delegated budget. Um, although it's been reduced, it's still delegated. And the head teacher that I'm working with very much honours that and ring fences that budget. But it does come into the school centrally and it does rely on the finance officer transferring the money into my budget. And there, there have been people coming in from above advising that the school itself, which has a deficit budget, should use my SEN budget in order to offset their deficit budget. And that happened in my previous setting, and and that would happen if I wasn't working with a head teacher who said, you know, stuck to her guns and said, no, that money is for those children. So that it adds to the challenge, and, and we still face the same challenges that you're saying. I don't disagree with anything you're saying. Disagree. Um, I, I think it's going to be difficult to discuss um, challenges without talking about um, funding. We get that um, However. <laughs> 
Perhaps it's more about where the funding's going, um, picking up on what Tanya's saying, um, around the, the money going to the right people. Um, local authorities are currently the, the middleman in terms of a, a funding agent for SEN, and they're not, they haven't got the capacity, they haven't got the capabilities anymore to be able to fulfill that role. Um, they, they are uh, hugely overspent in their high needs budgets. Uh, they are running into deficit models um, and they are also spending in excess of a quarter of the high needs budget on private school provision. So that could be uh, a specialist private school, um, but it's a private school nonetheless, which means that public money is going, it's being spent in an avenue which isn't, is, isn't bringing it back. Uh, to mainstream schools or maintain the maintained sector um, and that's despite the lack of the quality and uh, the positive outcomes that those schools can, can give. Um, with the private school sector charging um, into ten, ten times as much as what a maintained school would get, um, it makes it really difficult to understand the value of that spend. Mm. So. Uh, a look to change that format to make uh, a fair funding formula that is high needs focused um, and focus mostly on the, the spend on resource rather than trying to allocate a funding uh, attached to a pupil's need. It's very difficult to, to cost out what a pupil's need is and then moderate that across the country. It's impossible and that's why um, my colleagues in West Midlands Forum and Head Teachers Roundtable, it, we, we've discussed this and tried to work out what that formula could look like. But actually, by costing out tangible resources, which cost real money, then that would, that would lead the way into a funding model that would make sense. Um, and putting the resource into making that make sense, I think schools would, would find that um, a, a a more strategic way of moving forward. Mm, certainly feedback we've heard before. Yes. 